you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Welcome to the Board Game Snobs podcast. With me today, primary guest host, Daniel Rigsby Hughes. That is my middle name. The dream team back together. Gabby. Good to see you. I've missed you. It's been a while. Been it, a has while. Been, it has been a while. That How restraining order. They only don't last that as long as they used to do those restraining orders. That's the problem. Well, yeah. It's not the distance. It's, <laughs> I don't know what it would be other than distance, <laughs> but it's it's, uh, it's over with now, and here we are again. Yes, ready to entertain uh, the masses. Jerry is not here. The Jerry is not here, sadly. And thus, Jerry's not here, thus Daniel is here. And for that, Daniel, I am forever grateful. Now, before we get started, Gabby, I would just like to say how handsome you look with your, with your, honestly, Ladies and gentlemen, he used to look like a big overgrown baby, didn't he? Let's all we <laughs> let's all, let's all recall how Garvey Garvey looks in his in his photos, like a big chubby baby. He looks a large potato, as Jerry might say. A large potato. That's another way of putting it. But now he's got this this beard, this magnificent beard. It's not magnificently long or anything like that, but it's it's snowy white. He's got he's it, it kind of got this kind of Van Dyke thing going on with the with the so, grey, a and dash of pepper in there, a dash of pepper in there. He, you look good, man. You look really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad this camera is uh, from the neck up only. Yeah, well, there is that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but 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 nevertheless, Gabby, take I would, it. It's a take great it. headshot. It's a great headshot. I will take it. You look distinguished. And I am it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Never and shave again. Said that, Never I, shave I again. Not. I will not. It covers my double chin. It serves a myriad of purposes. Yeah. Food storage. It's it's, it's nothing but solid acne from that point down. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knows. All the teenagers, cover your acne with a beard. That's what you can do. Yeah, I'm not sure that's good advice for teenagers. Otherwise, you, 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 you end up with these, these scrappy beards. I uh, have had a beard since I was 20. And I've only shaved about three times since then, and then grew it straight back again. So I don't know whether you can count that as as being un, unbearded or not. I don't know. Occasion, occasionally, I had a goatee rather than a full beard, but yeah, I had a beard since I was twenty. I I, I just re- I've shaved my whole life. I just I never wanted facial hair because my father had a mustache, and I was like, I don't want to be looking like my dad. Yeah, but uh, I just thought you know I'm going to go for it. And here it is. And Listen, apparently it's you're board, working out. You're a board gamer, therefore you have to be roughly about forty five years of age, white, male, beard, bald. That is the rules. We didn't write them. That is the rules. It's not a neck beard, as no. Jerry would say. It's no, a, it's a legit beard. Have you got a neck beard though? Do you shave your neck? Oh no, it's trimmed. Look at that! that look at that! I trim it, my friend. I trim yeah. the edges. I like lines. I like it to be defined. Yeah, you see, this is. Uh, I stopped shaving because I couldn't be out shaving. So, so I've got a neck beard that I couldn't really hide with the rest of my beard. Um, yeah. So, so you are go. you? Are you? Uh, is your temperature hot with Olympic fever, Daniel? Do you know, I was all ready to come on and poo-poo the Olympics, <laughs> Gab. Because I, I, I walked into the lounge today, and number one, we've had to buy a subscription to watch the most of the Olympics because the, the BBC, who usually cover it, they didn't get the deal this year, so they've only got a few events. So in order to get the full spectrum of events, we've had to subscribe to Discovery Plus, how come Discovery Plus has got more money than the BBC? That doesn't sound right. Anyway. I don't know. Here it's yeah. on Peacock. Oh. NBC. Filth. Pure filth. Anyway. We, so we, and so I walked in and it's the, it was, my wife was watching the women's skateboarding. Now, have you ever watched women's skateboarding, Gabby? Is it? Uh, only at the Olympics. 
Yes, exactly. It's the only kind of thing you ever watch Olympics. Number one, they're all 12. Um, and I was reading an article about why they're all 12. It's because there's a real big advantage, especially in women's skateboarding, to be very, very light. So so they, they usually haven't gone all the way through puberty or, or whatever. At least they're very small girls, quite slight. slight. So they're all 12, all the women skateboarders. I think that's probably an exaggeration. 14, 15, 16, that kind of age. And I, and they kept just falling off. They're just falling off all the time. I thought, can this be possibly be an Olympic sport? Is this sport? the best of the world? Is this the best of the world? They're just all falling off. And I think the reason they're all falling off is because the tricks they were trying to do were very difficult. And they have to do, basically they have to score two out of five tricks. So as long as they don't fall off twice. Anyway, regardless. So I've, I've long had a very negative opinion of the Olympics, Gabby, because... I don't the, believe that. Yeah, because I grew up with a sister who was very into tennis, and my entire family's life revolved around tennis. We used to go to, on holiday, instead of going to a nice destination, we used to go to some grotty seaside town where there happened to be a tennis tournament on, for example. She used to get up early so in the morning. On holiday, on holiday, on, so on, like on Christmas or Thanksgiving, vacation. Or July 4th. You knew American well, holidays. You know, vacation and vacation. Oh, vacation. Yes. What a weird way to say that. Well, I know you don't normally get them in the uh, US. Uh, no, we do not. <laughs> we <laughs> we just had this not. conversation with Mike about it on a podcast just previously. No PTO anyway, for us. No PTO for me. Six weeks for me. Anyway, right. So you used to go and have to go on holiday all these places. So I always, I always resented it. And every time I watch the Olympics, I always think, say the Olympic javelin throwing. Somebody has dedicated the entire of their childhood to the javelin and the entire of their early 20s to becoming the best javelin thrower they could possibly be. And the absolute culmination of that entire life, all the sacrifice they've made, is coming 13th at the Olympics. (laughs) Yeah. Now, granted, someone comes first, but a lot of people don't come first. A lot of people come 12th, 11th, 13th. Yeah, exactly. Come first. Only one person comes the first, rest. unless they've changed the rules since I last watched it. <laughs> so it just strikes me as, what a waste. What a waste. So they, to expand on that, they should have a 1A and a 1B. Yes. Just to make everybody feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, get participation particip- trophies for everyone. I think they probably do get some kind of. They must surely must get some kind of certificate saying I was at the Olympics. Surely they got a. They got. They hold on to their airplane tickets. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, see, that's what it I flew be. to France. Well, I was watching the open ceremonies and it was like raining the entire. Uh, time. it was rubbish. It was rubbish. Nothing compared to the 2012 Olympics. I'm I'm speaking, Gabby. How dare you interrupt me when I'm talking oh, about the Olympics? Sorry, anyway, I was watching this women's skateboarding. Initially, I was poo-pooing it. I was trying uh, not to be. I think it's be... girls skateboarding from your description. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, yeah. Um, and and initially I was poo-pooing it, and then, as always with the Olympics, you start thinking, "Oh, I hope this Australian, I hope this Australian woman does okay because she's she's right. she's Let's... she's fallen off the first three. She's only got Sucking two attempts left, and it sucked me in with the human story. And then they pulled you know, me right there. it pulled Sucking. me right in. And at the end, I was glued to women's <laughs> skateboarding final. So so I so I can't yeah. So I, I've been watching. That's the only bit it's of watch. All though. about the human element. That's I I'm I'm with you a hundred percent. I don't watch any of these sports ever except every four years. Yeah. I don't care about any of them. I don't. I, I don't care about track meets. Come Olympic time, I'm going to watch every track meet event they have. I'm rooting for Shakari Richardson. Why? Well, she's a Dallas native, Dan. Close uh-huh. to home. She's had. You know, she was expelled from the last Olympics due to uh, her mother had passed away, and she was, you know, easing some of the pain with marijuana. Expelled from the Olympics. Big, Get out. Do, do you know who she is? Have you I've heard been- the name? No, why would I know who she is? She's not okay. from our, yeah. See, I just assume everyone knows the American team. Yeah. Well, that's just the way it should well, be, but you know. How American of you, Gabby, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so American, I'm half Chilean, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll no, tell you uh, what, though, there were no Americans in the fight, in the, in the medal. The, none of the Americans meddled in the skateboarding, I tell you that much. Two Japanese ladies and a Brazilian. Yeah. They call her the fairy, fairy princess. I wonder, I wonder which country invented skateboarding. 
uh, America. There I can, you go. I can, I can so tell we're you. Still number one. In I can the tell you where as well, hearts. and I can tell you why. Because it, it was invented in L.A., and it was because there was a huge drought in Mike L.A. Mike Delizio. Yeah, and it was a Mister Mike Delizio who invented it. Um, and there was a huge drought in L.A., and as a result of that huge drought, loads of swimming pools were empty. And that's where skateboarding started, the kind of tricks and stuff, because people, I mean, you could get toy skateboards before that, but the people started doing tricks and things like that in these, in these empty, empty swimming pools. It's like a Jerry fact that, you know, he states with great confidence and then everybody looks it up and says, no, actually. Well, that's what I've heard anyway. And there's a documentary about it, but I don't know what the documentary's called. I think that does sound familiar. So you're probably right. Yeah, but but, uh, I'm always right. um, I, but I. Michael Phelps, I haven't heard from him before. I haven't heard from him since. But when he was swimming, I, I was like, "There's, the, there we go, go, Michael, go." Just wasn't because he, you know, wasn't he you gotta, in trouble for drugs and stuff? Well, damn, that's all in the past now. <laughs> all in the past. Fair he enough. Cleaned himself up. He won his eight medals, and so you know, there's always just somebody that has a story. Uh, so this one for me is Shakiri Richardson. Uh, Noah Lyles is the the man. The the new up and comer that's dominating the track meets. Do they still? I don't think they call that track meets. It's probably like high school or something. But here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing. I was watching the sprint documentary on Netflix that covers all these runners. <sighs> There's there are so many of them. They're all so arrogant. Not all. I'm, I'm saying that wrong. Not all of them. Many of them appear to be so arrogant. And, you know, I guess if I was built as they were and the fastest person in the world, some of that may go to my head. But there's a difference between, like, some of the track stars there are now and, like, Usain Bolt. Do you know who that is, right? I do know who Usain Bolt. He's not American. He's Jamaican. And he was very cocky and arrogant in his own way. Ah, but in a humorous like, way, in a knowing way. Right. Right, right. Everybody liked him. He was always smiling, cutting up, and he was always putting on a show. But it was in a it was in a fun way. Yeah. But some of these people, like uh, like this Noah Lyles, I want to like him. But no, we hate him. We hate him. Um, the board game snobs official state <laughs> official statement on Noah Lyles. I've never I don't know who this man is, but I hate him He's with there. every He's... molecule in my body. I hope he falls over and breaks his ankle. No, I do not wish harm upon anyone. Yes, you do. He seems Apart from Noah Styles, he's arrogant. Uh, I've heard. He, I've heard he's on the run uh, for knocking over a gas store. That's what I've is. heard. That's what. Yeah. Do you have a favorite event? No, I don't like the Olympics. I, I just. <laughs> No, I've got so no. You e- just randomly got pulled into. I just ran because I was I was foolishly Children's downstairs when when uh, during the women's. Oh no, I love I have, you. I love I have, the Olympics. I have been to the Olympics. I went to the 2012 Olympics and I saw the women's football. It was America, the USA versus Colombia, I think. Um, and America won. They so there no you go. Doubt won that because they did. They were very empty stadium because it was up up in um, it's in Glasgow, and the rest of the Olympics were going on in uh, London. So so yeah. So I just happened to be in Glasgow, and we just got no. tickets at the last minute. So there you go. Well, you're probably not invested, probably because England's not good in anything. Is that England it? England punches well above its weight. In fact, <laughs> my, my my county in the, this is 2012 of Yorkshire would have come. I think it was would have come fifth. If it was its own country, we were, wow. we were that, yeah, yeah, we were that good. We we excel in the sitting down sports <laughs> in England. I so would any, excel in that as well. Any sport where you sit down, we we tend to be good at. So horse, Such as. horses, horse dressage, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Rowing, cycling, anything oh. where you don't have to stand up um, is is wearing the, the standing the standing events were much much worse. Much much worse. Standards. Yeah. No, no, I think I think we do really well at the Olympics generally for for, for a yeah. small country. It's because yeah. our lottery funds we we didn't for a long time and then we start having a national lottery and the and a percentage of the national lottery funds go into sports training and suddenly we got really good at Olympics because all these this the money that was spent started paying off. So yeah. It's uh it's interesting. I 
the uh because the I was really into the track and field because of Usain Bolt. I'm like, I like this guy. He's fun to watch. And he's fastest man alive. Then like the year that he was not whatever, maybe it was 2012 or Tokyo, whichever one was his first one. And uh I believe it was a French gentleman that won. Anyway, because I always wonder like how much money like if how much can you make in track, like running track? But apparently the winning the Olympics really boosts your visibility, especially yeah, your sponsorship. Events. Yeah, and he appears to be doing quite well for himself. He's not doing quite so well in running. I think right. he may have made the cut for this listen, year, but listen. The UK were fourth place overall behind USA, China, and Japan on the in the Tokyo Olympics. Well, who was first? Um, I don't know. Doesn't say. Doesn't say. <laughs> it, 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 it genuinely doesn't say because I didn't. I didn't type that. Out. I, I, it might be the USA. I don't know. I just. I really don't care about you know the politics of being yeah, but first it's nice. as a as a cu- country. But it, it's it's just it's a. Uh, I enjoy watching the gymnastics, the running. I, I get suckered in like you. I'll start watching it with no intent of really watching it. They were doing cycling. These women were cycling in the rain I yesterday. Bet, did you see some English people sitting down like a champion? <laughs> Excellent sitters they are. Yeah. No, but the the woman, uh, the USA lady, fell at least three times because it was so rainy and her back mm-hmm. tire just kept slipping out. And then her bicycle was messing up. She needed another bike. The guy bringing her the bike also fell and tripped on and landed on the new bike. It was a disaster. Are you sure you were watching a Benny Hill, uh, a rerun of <laughs> Benny was Hill? Bad. Was he going? It was li- sad. Li- 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 but again, cycling. I don't care about watching cycling. Yet here I am watching cycling. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. Maybe it's like many, a hypnosis. Many of your list subliminal. This really resonates with many of your listeners where they're going, I really don't care about this podcast. <laughs> why why do I keep on subscribing and listening to in. it? Yeah. They sucker me in. Just just, oh, well. just every every single episode I just hope Dan's gonna be on again, they say. We appreciate oh, we do have many people that are like, Oh, he's my favorite Englishman. Oh, because they don't know any Englishman. That's true. He's he's the Englishman. I represent the entire country. All right, Dan. I have yeah. a quiz for you. Excellent you like quizzes. I don't know yep. that you'll be any good at this one because this, I don't know if this is America centric or not. Are you familiar with most Marvel comic books? Yes, and DC. Is that an American thing or is? is yeah, that well, pretty- it, it it is it is an American thing, but 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 it, it it's pretty. Yeah, no, it, it, geek culture is geek culture the world over. Okay. I suspect, and they are popular the world over. And I think they may have pulled some of these also from the movies. So I'm going to give you a quote, and you tell me which superhero this belongs to. Okay. And they're not all Marvel DC, just an FYI. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is one I, I'll see. This is an easy one, I think. So a little layup to start you off. Yes. I can do this all day. Oh, that's Captain America. I can do this all day, he says. Very good. Correct. As yeah. As he gets pummeled. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> okay. Now, this one has been changed somewhat. Oh, right. Okay. Gonna, Cheating. I'm okay. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to give it to you as it is now. Yep. Truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. Oh, interesting. Well, I don't know if Superman always says truth, justice in the American way, um, but certainly it's a phrase associated with him. So I'm saying Superman, and he'll say a better tomorrow because it means that he can include people from outside of America. I know this is a hard concept <laughs> for you to to you to grasp. Superman, like, <laughs> if there's anything happening in the rest of the world... They can spin. <laughs> they can swivel. <laughs> I only save Americans. <laughs> it's like the aliens only ever invade America as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Great Hera. Great Hera, says Wonder Woman. Look at you. Okay, yeah, now, here's, here's a real test. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know this unless I was looking at it. Booyah. Booyah. I've got no idea. Let's say it's obviously, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say Iron Man, but I don't think it's Iron Man. Cyborg. <laughs> Cyborg. Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. It depends on what version of Cyborg, I suppose. He says know. it in the movies, yeah. 
I don't I, I'm sure he says it in the comic books. I don't care. I don't know Cyborg. He's a Teen Titans or something. He is Teen okay. Titans. Here's one for you. In brightest day, in blackest night. No evil shall escape my light. It's a Green Lantern. Very good. Okay, this one's a little testier. Yeah. Oh, my stars and garters. Oh, my stars and garters. That was you, wasn't it? Didn't you just say that when, when the podcast wasn't working properly? Oh, my I, stars and garters. In a fit of rage, I said it. <laughs> did, you, did you? Is that what you're saying? Fits of rage? <laughs> I mean, when, someone crash, like man down. When, when someone crashes into the back of you, you get out of the uh, get out of the car and stomp over to them and go, what the stars and garters are you playing at? <laughs> um, I don't even know what that means. Garters? Garters What's are the things garter? that hold your sock up. They're like, okay, well, that's kind of what I thought. But I think they are, I, anyway. The only thing I, I associate garters with uh, women, mostly. Like a garter belt. Like on the old can can dancers, they're suspended. Da, 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 oh, not the agatas. No, you're right. Maybe the agatas because you don't you throw it. Isn't it a tradition that right. people throw it to people or something like In that? The weddings, they take the garter. I don't know off. what it. I don't know what it means. Flowers means you're going to get married next. I don't know. Does garters mean you're going to kind of? Hey, hey, hey. I don't know. Gonna, <laughs> you may or may not get pregnant. Well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, I don't know that uh, one. That, that is beast, the oh. blue guy. He's a baddie these days, apparently. He's what? He's a baddie. He's an evil villain these days. He's oh, beast. they changed him? Yeah. He's taken a heel turn, then. He has taken a heel turn, to use the wrestling parlance. Okay, this is one I was not familiar with, though I did watch the cartoon and part of the show. Okay. Spoon! The tick! Wow! Look at you! Yeah, but I did not know that one. Yeah. Which 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 show did you watch? Was it Peter Saravanovich? Um, I watched the, the cartoon that was out, I guess, in the early yeah. 2000s. I never really was into that. It was one of those kind of, they think they're funnier than they are things for me was the tick. I liked it. Yeah, but you, you, you also think you're funnier than you are, though, so that's probably what... I do not think I'm funny. Uh, you look pretty funny with that beard. I'll see. Oh, well, I look, this feels like home. Making that was a me. that was a heel turn, ladies and gentlemen. A heel it feels turn. Like, oh, I have not been insulted yet this podcast because you were no. very complimentary in the beginning. And you, you don't know, look funny that like, beard. That that beard is like, magnificent. You look like a Roman emperor. That's what you look like. You're all Zeus. You look like Zeus. Can I do a screen capture? Let me do a screen capture. Because because you've got, you've also got the white t shirt on, so that looks a bit like a toga. Oh, I can do a screen capture, but I don't know how to do it. I could do a screen capture. Hang on a second. Let's see. If I can share this with the audience. Oh, sure. it hasn't worked. Uh-oh. No, I got to pose for it right, though. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> right. You look a little bit constipated, but... I'm screen capturing. Okay, there. Okay. Scintillating podcasting. Right, come on. More, more. I'm, right. I'm enjoying these. Okay. You haven't done great power right. comes great responsibility yet. Come on. Well, that was too obvious. No. Oh. Sweet Christmas. Sweet Christmas. That's another Captain America one, isn't it? Luke Cage. Oh, that's a Luke Cage. I should have, I should have known that. I what? don't know Luke Cage. Oh, did you not watch the Netflixy thing? It's good. I did not. I enjoyed it. Apart from it got bad halfway through, but yeah. <laughs> You enjoyed half of it. The rest of it. I enjoyed all of those Netflix ones. I, I uh, yeah, yeah. This one I'm a f I'm also not familiar with, but you probably are. By the I'm going to say it how it looks. Power of Grey School. By the hoary hosts of Hoggeth. I don't know, hoary. but I'm H O A R Y. Hmm. Could it be Doctor Strange? Very good. Yeah, you showed me the answer at the same time you showed me the... <laughs> my bad. <laughs> okay, you alluded to this just moments ago. It's my last one. Okay. I have the power. Ah, He-Man. Did you I watch He-Man in your age growing up? Yes, I did at my age when I was growing up. Um, Yes, and Thundercats. I was probably a little bit more into Thundercats. See, I, I didn't even know what Thundercats was until recently. But we both was... knew what Brave Star was because we bonded Brave over it. Brave Star was 
fan. Was uh, it was okay? Look, twenty twenty the, the horse. Or was it forty? I think at the sake of you perhaps ignoring your sporadically bored Facebook group, you have your I have a mixtape group. What do you mean for the sake group? of it? Because you're posting all these. Oh, put a song in and yeah, we're making mixtapes, baby. Favorite cartoons and. I yeah. really enjoy contributing songs to all of yeah. this. A lot, a lot of people do. I think it's it's really popular. We do one every Sunday. Have it's you... really good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You, you've hit upon something there. Yeah, bit of bit of a uh, social social engagement. No, it's and to be honest, it's fun putting them together. Although it's difficult not being too scathing on some of people's choices because some people's musical tastes don't align with mine, and I always begrudging. And then some people pick like. D- so this is a thing on the I Made You a Mixtape Facebook group where every Sunday, I've just done it now actually, we we ask for some songs on a theme and then people just send all these songs on a theme and then on Tuesday I'll make a, mic, a, a kind of Spotify playlist out of it and make a little graphic for it and put it all together and then you've got a big compilation of these songs on a the theme of and the, load, and the, lo- and loads of people's different the tastes. List, yeah, the link in, link in the comments. Yeah. That's where links go now. They do go in the... That's because Facebook doesn't like you putting posts on that might tempt them away, tempt you away from Facebook. That's what it's about. And uh, yeah, and it's great. Apart from apart from some people, I don't agree with their taste. So so it's it's great because I'm exposed to new music. But some people, I'm I'm just never going to get on with it. Their tasting um, n- noise. So do you try to check them all? You do? Do you try to? Yeah, check listen them to them all. all? Yeah, listen to them all. Yeah, what not all the way through. Contributions. I need to well, know. Well, your contributions are. Interesting, because they, they, well, a lot of your contributions are, are kind of almost from your Chilean background. I'd say you, you do a lot of kind of my uh, father, yeah, world music and stuff like that, don't you? Yeah, the Los Chalchaleros. That's uh, I believe they're actually Argentinian, but they're a big deal. I apologize. I'm, I'm I'm not a I'm yes. My 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 knowledge of South America is is pretty. Well, poor, no, no, to be you're honest. you're fine. You're correct because my dad absolutely loves them, but they are Argentinian origin band, I believe. Right, okay. So a lot of yours are those kind of things, and that's great. I love those that stuff because all the you get really interesting new genres and stuff like that. But um, so it's great. The things I don't really like are the nine minute heavy metal death Norwegian death metal. <laughs> Is that aimed at? Uh, let's see how many Nor. Uh, it's either what's uh. <laughs> You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be Norwegian to like Norwegian death metal, but. but... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. The the two, I guess you might say, world world music uh, uh, contributions I've made have neither one of them been Chilean. Oh, I apologize. My dad liked uh, Los Chachaleros. They're from Argentina, and Javier Solis is Mexican. So, yeah, I'm not too familiar with actually. I don't think any Chilean bands. No, well, that, that, this is your opportunity to to. to uh... Uh, I have to consult with my father and find out. I've been slipping some uh, um, Irish folk and some English folk into uh, folk music into um, into the mix as well, which is good. Well, so we're uh, all part of the kingdom, so that counts. Um, I don't know if Ireland would be particularly happy with you saying that, but oh. still. <laughs> See, that's uh, American ignorance of world politics. <laughs> Bits of Ireland are part of the kingdom, oh, okay. um, uh, um, but but even yeah, then, I, I, you, the, some cool. people in those those areas wouldn't be particularly happy either. So yeah, so it's good. It's good. We we just kind of well, it's a lot of fun anyway. So I've always enjoyed engaging with people and stuff like that. And we're just trying to kind of build up some kind of a community for for a major mixtape. Which Gabby, why would you want to do that, Dan? Because it is. We've now decided we're going to go to come to Kickstarter um, at in November. Which sounds like a long way away, but it isn't. Um, so this is our card drafting game where you're going to be. Um, it was an I split you choose game as well, where you're going to be getting tracks for your for your mixtape and putting it into a into a kind of your tableau, and it, it's just a really fun I split you choose set collection drafting. And there's a kind of spatial element to it as well because it matters where you put your tracks because they have to flow nicely into each other. So we have a, a little line of a ribbon of cassette tape that flows all the way through your uh, through your mixtape, which shows how well your your tracks all flow with each other. And um, it's a lot of fun. So so yes, me and Mike Delisio have designed that, and we are coming to Kickstarter in November. And if you want to, the thing 
if anyone wants to support us, the thing they can best do in the whole world is go to well, you, there's lots of things you could do, but but if you can f- basically, if you find a link, um. In this, in the pod, in this show's podcast in show notes, notes, in the show notes, to our, our Kickstarter kind of coming soon page, and and click follow. That'd be really good because um, the more people do that, the more buzz we get. So even if you've got no interest in it, that'd be really nice if you did if you if you did that for us. That'd be fantastic. Um, so yeah, we're really excited, really excited. Um, Very good. And we've got no a partnership as well. November. Uh, I think the fourth of November, but roughly, roughly the first Monday in November is is when we're planning on launching. You never know; these things could sometimes get pushed back and things like that. But that's the plan. Um, and we we're partnering as well. So it's myself, Mike Delicio, and Gary King. So Gary King did the art for Core Quest. Um, we're also partnering with All Play, who are going to do our our um, play is good. Yeah, baby. Um, they're not publishing it; we're publishing it. But what they're going to do for us is. They're going to handle the logistics and the fulfillment of it, and also they'll they'll run us on their um their web store, so people will be able to buy it afterwards on their web store. So it's very exciting. So we're going to be we're going to be a, an official all play uh, partner, just like kind of Bite Wing Games are and stuff like that. So that's really exciting. That's still that's been agreed, but it's not one hundred percent cast in concrete. But yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting stuff. And Mike Delicio has created his own publishing house, Massive Asterix Games, to uh, publishing it. So so Mike is now an official board game publisher. So there you go. Very that's my plug. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that's all I've got for you. Goodbye. I'm going to might as well hang up now. <laughs> and that's the show. Done. Yeah. Done. Got I'm what done. I'm there. checked out. Any expansions to Core Quest coming out? No, not that I'm game? aware of. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Link in the show notes to follow <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Gabby, we could put the link in the show notes. So we got the we got a massiveasterix dot com. That is the 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 site where you can find a load of information. As is the I made you a mixtape. Have not checked out massive asterix. Well, it's still in construction as we speak, uh-huh. but it'll be ready on it'll be ready on Wednesday. Um, going to launch on Wednesday. Well, launch probably on Thursday actually. But so so so, and there's the I do a mixtape Facebook group, which is really good. It's a popping place to be. We're talking about nostalgia and mixtapes and all sorts of stuff. It's a very good. I I enjoy it tremendously. Yeah, Master yeah. Matrix Games. I see a mixtape. Turn up the volume. There's something new to play coming soon. Yeah, baby. It's, well, Gary's on with. Uh, this website is not secure. Let me get off of here. <laughs> We're also going to sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that is, though? That's only that's so you, you can't use HTTP HTTPS. It's only HTTP, and it's a it's a scam because we don't need oh, yeah. it, we don't need it to be secure. I don't, I don't I don't understand the internet. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Like, who owns the internet? Like, how do you just not like? Well, I don't get it. I don't no. get it. So we have to pay thirty pounds to get a security certificate when we're not actually going to be taking any information. So it doesn't matter. But because it goes loop loop, not secure. Dan Hughes is going to infect your computer no. with viruses. Here come the Russian bots. <laughs> Here come the Russian over. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so there well, you that's go. That's good. I, I I I look forward to my uh, review copy of your. I made a mixtape. Well, we we we, exciting we, to play. we 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 we're getting some printed, so we might send you. Uh, oh, you uh, we go. might send you one. Right. Oh, you can right. you can have right. a go at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Save me the. Uh, how much is it going to cost? Do you know? What to um to to what, buy it to buy it? We're thinking twenty five dollars, but we need to just finalize that number. But cheap postage. Okay. We're hoping for kind of four or five dollar postage. It's not bad that. So, so Kickstarter. I mean, so I don't know how to phrase this for you. How dare nobody you. picked it up for you. We decided against going. You decided uh, with the against. Publisher. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We initially were going weren't going to go with Kickstarter only because I couldn't face it again. <laughs> you, you were, I was say you weren't fired. I quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I um but I, I I decided that I could face it again, and I'm enjoying the okay. process now. I just need That's a bit good. of space between you know my I, last campaign and the, it's a lot of work. Is doing a Kickstarter. Yeah, um, I know. I think that's interesting. You're you're. I don't know how you do it. That seems like a lot of work and a lot of time, and I can't even comprehend what is involved. I have no idea. But 
Hats off to you. If I wore a hat, I would take it off right now. Well, because all player involved, it's a bit easier because because part of the thing that made me anxious about doing another one is I've never because there's the whole process of getting your game from the printer into people's houses, which is really quite complex and it's the most expensive part. Printing it's not is is relatively cheap compared to getting it across the ocean and then and then and then getting it into people's houses i mean that the real expensive thing is getting it from the distribution center say in florida to someone else in canada that's where the real cost comes and people don't realize when they pay the postage on on kickstarters how heavily subsidized that is by their creators because because no no one would be willing to pay how much it actually costs to do it but anyway you know it is it is I'm what it is for you i'm happy you're getting this out there and i'm look i really do look forward to it all play has done some really good games uh we have an own we just recently not too many podcasts ago did couture that's the right. like, design the the fashion game yeah kind of a set collection they have this kabuto somo the little dexterity game i've heard of yeah although that was my that was my arch nemesis during core quest because that campaign was running <laughs> that was campaign was was running at the same time if it's, you can't beat them join them that's how you win well I, w- I would like to say they're not publishing us we're publishing us they're just helping us with the the distribution uh, so uh, I got you. so I clarified so don't blame us or them for anything that we or they do <laughs> but they're very nice people we had a, a couple of meetings with them very nice people they do a lot of imprints yeah. they do bite wing they do a few other ones not that they work with other publishers to to handle their logistics and and sell on their games and almost distribute them as well it's really exciting it's really exciting yeah i'm excited as well and this being my third game if it actually does fund i'm going to start actually calling myself a designer do you know what i mean because i think i think you legit can at that point can't you well, you know you're no longer dabbling no i i i think after one you're good but what was your first two well it depends if you count expansion all right oh, all right okay. but the, the expansion took as ne- nearly as much effort as the the, the main game there's a lot of lot of stuff that came came with that so there you go yeah. all my uh, achievements pale into into insignificance compared to your beard though gabby I appreciate that. It took me at least a good solid four months to grow this. No, oh. oh. and I, I, need- I, I oil it. I use beard balm. Uh, you see, you can tell because it's. Do you know? I can almost reach out and stroke it, and I know it's going to taste like soft, fluffy clouds. Mine's all wiry and 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 stuff. Whereas yours is just groomed. It's beautiful. I- I do have uh, when I had hair on my, upon my head, not just yes. on my face, which I have no I more. Don't, I don't believe it for a second. Go on, yeah. When I had hair upon my head, it was uh, I got it from my mother's side of the family. It was very straight and fine. Yes, it was very just. I, I never, I never had. Would like you describe thick- it as flyaway? I'm not quite sure what that means, but I don't either. I just wondered if you would. If the all. wind blew, it would be affected. That's how just it was. That's I how most like hair a, works, to be fair. But yeah, God, I don't know. Some people got thick, curly hair that doesn't really That's get true. affected. That's true. Mine was affected, and uh, I don't know. You know, whatever happened at the age of 28 ish, it started thinning out, and I began to lose it. And you- along with part of my dignity, because I loved my hair. Do you remember? You, the first photo you saw where you were, you, your head was bowed down or something like that. <laughs> and you went, what? What? I, 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 I can recall very clearly the first photo I, do I, as well. I, I saw when I thought, oh, my God, that's really bad. I yeah. was playing a game of dominoes, a game called 42 here in the States. It's a trick-taking game. And uh, a friend of mine took a picture of the top of my head because he was like, man, you're thinning up here. And I was like, yeah, I know. But I didn't ever, like, take a picture of it. And yeah. then he showed it to me. I was like, oh, my God. And I was 28, 29, 30. Yeah, that would be about the same age. as well, I was a bit younger, maybe about 25 when mine started going. Yeah. And what's bad is, see, one of my defining characteristics that first attracted my wife to me yeah. was my luxurious, dark locks. What, what age did you get married? 21. Excellent. You trapped her. Chapter her. Got, got her in there first. <laughs> and this is what you're stuck with now. 
Uh, what does your wife think to your magnificent Fortunately, beard? she still likes me, so that's good. We're in wow. good shape so far. It's amazing. It's amazing. That, that is, is incredible. incredible. Wow. It's hard, to, it's, hard to put, it's hard to put up this facade for 25 years, but I've managed yeah. to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we can talk about some games besides I made you a mixtape. We don't have to talk about to games. Kickstarter it, uh, in November. Uh, Follow it on the Kickstarter thing, and that would make me very happy. Thank you. So link in the show notes. Link in the show notes. All right, but I well, fortunately for for us, Dan, I did play some games just last weekend. Oh, I played the whole uh, side down. Go on. I played. I played Dawn of Mankind, which me and Jerry actually demoed back in 2019. It's just a decision tree game by Tasty Minstrel, which no longer exists. I was going to say that doesn't exist anymore, does it? No, it does not. I don't know who publishes it because the design, the publisher of the version we have is Tasty Minstrel. The designer might, ex- um, might not exist anymore at all. Some a lot of Tasty Minstrel's games don't. Uh, well, I looked on eBay on the Game Geek Board Game Geeks website, and it's still like twenty five, thirty bucks. So apparently, it's not anything anybody's hot to buy. No, but I don't think anyone's publishing it. It's only got Tasty Minstrel here. Okay, that's a yeah, shame, isn't it? designer marco pranzo it's a nice entryway game i think i liked it a lot more at our demo but we were also at bgg con and just very excited to be there and the lady that taught us was very nice uh it's not a game i would personally own buy or really want to play again (laughs) take that marco (laughs) i i think it's great for your kids Right, it's an it's a, it's a it's a welcoming game, right? As as the dice tower would have Along us say. Along the lines of Ticket to Ride, it has it listed as a worker placement, which it is not. Like I don't know because you're just following these paths of these different ages. You're aging your clan through the years. It's a uh, obviously by the name Donna Mankind. You're like this caveman with I think he's even carrying like a big stick. And he just gets older. So you're collecting food and you use the food and other things to, it's just typical, collect this to use it to pay for that and get points. It's it's fine. It's fine. It's a perfectly okay game for yeah. not people that are not me. My incredible insight into it is I like the box cover. There you go. It is. I like the art as well. We also played the rest of the games I have played and love. High Society. I haven't played that in a several oh, years what a now. good game man and it's it's just so fantastic and the folks i played it with were first time gamers they loved it we played it three times in a row uh that was a smash hit then we played love letter and one of the i was playing with a friend of mine who had brought their nephew he's like 16 i think And he actually preferred Love Letter to High Society, which I wasn't particularly fond of because High Society to me is a superior game. But I I get they're completely different games. But if you present it to me, you want to play this or that, I'm choosing High Society every time. But Love Letter is is very fun. It is. It is. And and, and I think people might underestimate how much of a revolution Love Letter brought. If they weren't around for when Love Letter first came out. It was massive, wasn't it? It was absolutely massive. Yeah, and everyone was making small card, you know, low card number some card games. Card yeah. deck games. Uh, I made my own version of Love Letter. Did, did you know this? I made. What uh, was uh, it? It was based on a British sitcom called Dad's Army. So I rethemed it to uh, Dad's Army Love Letter. As people many, in the, many people did. People in the UK will be amazed and thrilled by that. Everyone else will be like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I don't understand the words you just said, but I'm yeah. happy for you. Dad's Army, a TV program about elderly people uh, trying to stave off the Nazis in England. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, they didn't really uh, do it, but yeah. They did. <laughs> they well, but they, it was in case the Nazis invaded. We have we had a whole uh, force uh, of of people, um, elderly people, or very young people, or people who weren't in the army who were in this thing called the Home Guard. Um, so basically territorial, um, what would you call it? National Guard, I'm guessing, sort of. So you were arming the nursing homes is what you're saying. Basically, yeah, yeah, because they thought that if the Nazis, because there's a very real threat of the Nazis coming over during World War uh, Yeah, so, you're in the same country, just a few countries over. Just a few countries over from from France. And so um, 
and so yeah, so they never they thought they might do, so they armed a load of people. But then they, these were all in the, the comedy of it was that basically competent people. Messing Side around question: guns. Yes, does okay. So here in America, we have nursing homes where yes, people they get tired of taking care of their parents, stuff their parents, and try to forget about them. Well. Okay, I could go on for a lot. This is my area of expertise. If you want to, if you want to, if you really want to go into this, <laughs> no, is is I do a lot something of something similar there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, you've got you've got the yes. I would I would and argue. I, I, with, okay, I don't want to say that. I'm sure there's people that certain circumstances you just don't have the capabilities to take care. Most of at, at some point within a, a, someone's dementia progress, right? No, no family doesn't matter how right. loving can can cope with with uh, someone with I dementia there's, 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 all, there's always a point where where it becomes too much so no one that should feel a, no one should feel guilty about that because because that yeah. is that is sadly though there are yeah. many that are just put in there to be yes we do have we do have are terrible yes we we would call them either residential homes or nursing homes depending on how they were staffed and i can go on further this is what this is my job <laughs> it's a lot okay, of working. I, figured, I thought it was maybe somewhat related. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of work with. I don't work in a nursing home, but I do a lot of work with nursing homes to try and stop the people in there having to be admitted to hospital when the nursing homes can't cope with them any longer. I'll tell you I, something. I've been meaning. I don't know if I've brought this up before because I. Okay, I, I'm still watching Call the Midwife because there's a load right. of seasons on Netflix. I was unfamiliar. I'm not a midwife. With these, I I I I I understand. What is the is it workhouses? Oh well, that's they they didn't they, that was a long time ago. Workhouse, um, but they sound like they were basically like concentration. They were really bad. Yeah, really bad. This is call the bit of my when, when is it set? It's only the sixties, isn't it? Sometimes it's in the sixties. Yeah, oh, was it sixties or forties? It's uh, most of it takes place in the '60s that we're watching. Uh, but there's no workhouses in the '60s. The workhouses, no, it, like it's all like people that have been scarred by the past. In ah, the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, very Dickensian almost. Workhouses were basically where you went if you were if you were poor and couldn't were too before the kind of welfare state before the social security became a thing. Then you would go. You, it was a kind of effectively your benefits, but you all had to work in the workhouses. So you, it's like 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 a concentration camp for poor people. Yeah, Her- horrendous, mm, horrendous, awful. So it was supposedly something that's supposed to be of benefit, but yeah. it sounds like it was very abused and, and yeah, and difficult to get out of. Um, mm. So once you were in it, it was difficult to raise yourself out of it. Dickens will there'll be workhouses all over the place in Dickens and stuff oh, like that. That's okay. the kind. That's kind of kind of thing. Uh yeah. Yeah. They might have existed they will have existed kind of maybe the turn of the century and also the NHS our um socialized medical care only came into thing after the second world war so so before then it was uh I don't know how well it worked probably the same as yeah you just had to pay for stuff. I enjoy call the midwife. It has taught me a lot about England I never knew before. Uh, like we still have workhouses. Yeah, <laughs> not still. Just wondering about your history that I've never heard about because it's you know you're only taught the history of your country at least here in America. And when I was growing up, apparently it was all wrong. <laughs> I've been listening to a, a really interesting set of podcasts about um, Custer, um, General Custer. Oh yeah, he was a yeah. good guy when I was growing up. <laughs> Him and Columbus were all the go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also I've been inter- yeah listening to about them um, about can't remember his name the chap who went into Mexico and and did a lot of nasty stuff. But it's really interesting stuff. I don't know. Pancho Villa. It could have been. Could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't can't remember his name unfortunately. Oh, huh. yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So what what. what what was I talking about before we got distracted? Oh, games. We were talking yeah. about games. <laughs> so we played High Society Love Letter. And then, so we had, uh, we had my, that was four of us playing. And then we had some other friends come over. And so then we played Green Team Wins, which I enjoyed tremendously. It's, you have these three genres of questions. It's a, uh, would you rather question a uh, you're given three choices to choose from questions. 
and then a it gives you a word and a blank either before or after the word and then so you write your answer down and the person that all of you that are in the majority you gain points if you're not in the majority you don't gain points it's a very fun game at least a lot of discussion and the why you chose your answers and all this type of fun it's a fantastic social game yeah. and it's just it's just always like a solid game then, but I played with a late a, a friend of mine. She always wants me to bring the games, but then she complains about them the whole time we're playing. Yeah. I hope so, you punched her in the throat. <laughs> so then I told her last time, I'm like, I was like, I'm done. I'm not bringing the games this time. But this time they came to our house and we were already playing games. So I broke out. Green team wins which she likes, and then Telestrations, which she hadn't played before. You can't... I, now, no one can not like Telestrations, surely. She absolutely loved Telestrations. Okay, that's fine. And there I, was, was, I, was, I was about to demand you cut off all contact with it, but right, no there, contact. I, I, she, she, uh, she literally said, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is just such a ridiculous, fun... And, and, and of course I break it out and they're like, what do you do in this game? I'm like, well, you have to draw. I'm not good at drawing. I'm like, that makes it even better. Exactly. The game fails when you, anyone's good if, at drawing. If you could all draw, we might as well not play. Yeah. And it, it was a smash hit. Everybody loved it. I just, uh, for me right now, my two favorite party games are green team wins, which is relatively new. I mean, I've, I've not, I've not heard of it. Yeah. Really? No. Oh, it's good. It's uh, published by 25th Century Games. I'm sorry. I do not. You know, I hate it when I don't know the designer, but I do know the publisher. Uh, Green Team wins. I'm looking it up right now. It is designed by Nathan Thornton. Oh, Nathan. (laughs) He designed that old wallpaper. (laughs) You are. You're very good at board game geek. (laughs) a medium yeah Yeah. so it's very it's a uh it's a it's a fun game i do recommend because like the initial box that came out was like for six people i'm like if i have a party game i don't consider a party six people like i wouldn't but you could play uh viticulture with six people (laughs) i wouldn't do it but you could. Yeah, yeah, but that's not the... Mm, I know what you're saying, but it it's not for a party. For a real, a proper party, right. you're not playing board games, are you? Let's face it. That's true. You're right. It, 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 it's it's a, a... I don't know. It's a, it's a board game as party game. Yeah. It gives, gives the illusion of having fun. So Green Team wins. They, I, I ended up buying... I just bought two copies because it's kind of like Wits and Wagers. Like, infinite people can play. You just right. need enough yeah. opponents. Yeah. So I bought two copies, and uh, I think since then he's come out with, uh, Chad has come out with a 10-plus party pack version or something. It's a good game. Check it out. The thing with these party games is you're always a little bit cross that someone's thought of it and you never did. Do you know what I mean? Cross is the wrong word, but you just think it's so simple, and obviously... But there's a lot of party games out that are exactly the same game as well. So it's it's just it's it's, it's a real skill is designing a party game. Don't get me wrong. I also think it must be awful to play test them though. Because imagine playing a party game, game, a party game that doesn't work is one of the worst gaming experiences well, that you can right, have, isn't it? Because I have played uh, like wavelength. You can play yeah. wavelength that works really good. And wavelength is the game where you have two extremes and you given a thing, you're supposed to know exactly where it falls in this particular dial. And it's all over TikTok. Really? I've seen a lot of people play on, on well, the old man's it's, version of TikTok, which is Facebook Reels. But I've seen lots of... <laughs> it's a rather old game at this point in board gaming years. Yeah, but I, th- I think a few people have got hold of it because it's quite good, easy content, I think, is is yeah. playing playing that. So they all go, Whoa! Hey, I'm going to you! And stuff like that and get very excited. So in wavelength, which we discussed on this podcast before, but I'll briefly, so it gives you these two extremes of something hot and cold, and then you spin this dial randomly and it will show up in a certain part of the board, which is maybe it's like something that would be 20% hot. 
well, it was 20% hot or 100% hot would be the easiest thing for me to go with. Like you could say the sun. Okay. Yeah. So you would say the sun. And if they guess this dial location in a particular area, then yeah, points. It's, it's you know, whether or not you keep points is we do keep points because the way it's set up. But uh, I played it once. It kind of fell flat. I played it again with another group and they really enjoyed it. Then I played it again with another group and it fell flat again. Yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 it's fallen flat when I've played it. Yeah. Um, as opposed to green team wins. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like for me, I like a game that everywhere I've played it, it's been a hit. I might see if I can play at dice tower retreats with your (sighs) co-host. Jerry. That would be wonderful. I wish I could go, but I'm happy he's going. And <laughs> I had heard of your and Mike's concerns about, you know, having Jerry there and whether or not him, he can. Him embarrassing us. He, he can <laughs> embarrass you. And he I, can... He'll, I, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. I trusted Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where you, that's where you should put the screen to grab. Guy, guy, Jack, blah, blah, oh, Gary. I'm going to call you. Be- yeah, he's in my room, Gabby. He's in my room. I know. It's a living It'll nightmare. It'll be fun. That's going just- a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. It's not like long away. It's about four weeks away. All right. You can come. You should come. Come on. I, can- come I cannot come. PTO, Dan. I have none. Just, just work from there. Ooh. That's- I'll cover. I'll cover your shift. I'll do. I'll. We'll all do an hour each. Hello, this is Gabby. I'm going <laughs> to... What's your insurance claim? Yeah. Is that what you think of me? Yeah. Yeah. To close this out, I'm going to do a Bubba Top 5 with you. What? Okay. What? Bubba, a member of the board game Snob. I know Bubba is. The only intelligent but... member of the Bubba's board game Snobs. <laughs> he is very intelligent. However, his lists are quite insane, and he came up with this Bubba Type 5 that well, it was just so random. So, number five, what is the, ga- the last game you've played? Oh, the last game I played? Um, the last game I played was... Ooh. I know this isn't a question that needs that much thought. Um, it, it will have been... Oh, um, World Wonders. Which is a great game. Ooh, that is a good game. Yeah, Excellent. Good Excellent choice for having played your last game. Yeah. What do you mean, my last game ever? That is that a threat? <laughs> and now you die. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this took a turn. Okay, number four. Yeah. Describe a game by box art. And if you do it, make it something relatively old because I don't have any new game. All right, so I've got to I've got to describe a game by its box art. Obviously, that is exactly what you just said. I've just got to think of it. Right. Okay. It's killing time. It's 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 kind of um, beige. The majority of the color is beige, lovely beige, um, and it's all shades of brown. A little bit of green, but mainly shades of brown. It's got a train on the cover, and it's coming towards you. And, and railways of no, and and the the title is in kind of. Almost old timey Western font, which is red as far as Age I remember. Of Steam. No, you idiot. And then and then there's a picture of two very badly drawn people in the bottom left hand corner. No, right hand corner of the box. Um and and there's a little badge on it that says Days of Wonder and then the, the title says Ticket to Ride. Oh, you... oh Ticket to Ride. It is Ticket to Ride. Yeah, well done. All right, ticket to ride. That was a I I thought that, that was question a, actually. I, I, yeah, well, I we think, always try to change it, but I forget what we've changed it to. It, it, it was um, it was a, a round in uh, this game is broken. Um, we used to do that. What is your favorite movie at the moment? I recently watched an Adam Sandler movie, which was a, an Adam Sandler movie, an Adam Sandler, an Adam Sandler rip off of Groundhog Day, and I can't remember what it what it's called, but it was really good. Rip so off you know what. Groundhog Day. Um, oh. Adam Sandler. Round. Remote control? No, Remote? you idiot. What's he? Read us the same day? Yeah, he just redoes the same day over and over and over again. Um, but you kind of meet him 
in the in the middle of it. So he's he's in the middle of it, and then he drags this woman into it by accident, and he falls in love with this woman. It's really, and they're both living the same day over and over again. It's really good, um, and it starts off being a kind of screwball comedy, but gets quite quite deep. Click, not click. It's only recent. What? Right, flipping egg. Right, I'm gonna have to. Right, all right. I'll, Adam Sandler film. Or I think it's probably made for um, Netflix. I'm guessing. Um, I'm yeah, sure it's really good. Obviously, because I can remember the name of it so <laughs> well. Um, I'm typing in Adam Sandler Groundhog Day. Let's see. Uh, no, nothing. First coming. dates. No, that's good. I quite like that, actually. Oh, I love 50 First Dates. 50 First, first Dates. I don't uh, know. You may have a movie that I don't have. Are you saying Andy Samberg? I'm saying Andy Samberg. That's what I said. And Adam Sandler. You said, said Andy Adam Sandler. Sandler. I said Andy Sandberg. And Adam Sandler. I clearly Palm said. Palm Springs. Palm Springs. That's it. Yeah. That's the movie. You said Adam Sandler. I think if you listen back to the tape, you will clearly. I most definitely will have to because I'm no. sure you said Adam Sandler. I may have said Adam Sandler. <laughs> okay, yes, I have heard of Palm Springs and I have it's really good. It. You you should Does watch it. it. It's really good. I think it's on Hulu. It may have been done by Hulu. Question. I yes. get the vibe it doesn't have like a happy ending. Um I don't want to spoil it. Um okay, but it, it does it, I'll watch it. It, it 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 it's it's not it doesn't make you feel bad when you leave it. Okay, all right. I, I I get you don't like sad movies either, really. So. No, 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 no. I don't like sad movies. There, there, there's it's it's an interesting end because it's quite philosophical. Um, okay. I I think I think it's quite yeah. philosophical. Um, all right. I'll tell you what else is good. That Fallout TV show. Have you seen that? That's great on Prime. Oh, okay. Really enjoyed that. Okay. Get, next question. Number two. Number two. This is one that's a pretty common question for board gamers. Board game you want to see made into a movie? None of them. Oh, Jamal. I lie. I lie. Cora Quest. For there fa- you go. fairly obvious reasons. There you go. You could make, I made that you would a be mixtape. Money. money. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. I made you a mixtape could be like in the Stranger really a, Things It was nearly a TV show. I've told you about the TV show, haven't I? I don't know if you have. It wasn't nearly a TV show, but during the Kickstarter for Cora Quest, when it took off big, when I got interviewed on TV, well, Cora got interviewed on TV, and I kind of went along. Um, I got a, an email for some from for some writers, uh, and they were writers who used to work for the Disney Channel. Um, Dog with a blog is what they used to write, but they were proper Hollywood writers. I looked them up and everything, and I ended up having these about three or four meetings with them and their agents because they were wanting to convert. Core Quest to a to a TV program and 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 try and sell it to various streaming services, um, and it got quite exciting for a while, and then they sent a few contracts through, and the contracts wanted quite a lot of rights to it, and I wasn't confident they weren't trying to rip me off, but I wasn't confident I wasn't confident that I would be able to publish the board game legally with those those contracts, and I'd need to get a LA lawyer to to look it over and it's going to be a lot of money and stuff like that they weren't offering any money what they were going to do is they wanted the option to try and they were going to write a, a kind of i don't know what you call it, treatment or whatever you know a description of it and then try and sell it to various things and then if that got picked up that's when i would get some of the money for it so there was no money involved they wanted a lot of rights and also the core quest story that I had in mind wouldn't be the Core Quest story they told, so the board game would be different. So I ended up saying I'm not interested. But that was quite an interesting period of time for a little bit. Oh, for a moment there, for, it could have all been different. I, I, I do wonder what would have happened if I'd said yes. Do you know what I mean? Because that could have yeah. been that could have been interesting. But the the like the, all these things that that most of them never get made. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't really nearly a right. TV show. It was just it's anyway. not promised. No, it was never promised. Yeah, so there you go. That's my Core Quest TV story. Number one. Right, number one. Have you ever nearly had a TV program made about a board game? No. That would be pretty impressive. No, I was just saying that was question number one, and I've already spoken. Oh, no, no. I do apologize. 
Okay, so number one is easy. It's a softball. It's basically a few yards of garbage. Your favorite thing you're enjoying right now, and it could be anything. Um. Well, <laughs> I was going to say something naughty. I'm going to say the the. Um, I've only just finished enjoying it, mind you. But the um the uh, oh, Fallout, the Fallout TV show, absolutely superb. I really recommend it. Um, I've never really played the Fallout games, um, but I really like the world it's set on. the The acting in it is absolutely superb. The, the chap who played the sort of baddie in Justified is the one of the characters. Yeah, um, Walton Goggins. Yeah, he's really good. He plays a cowboy, bounty hunter type person without a nose, and he's really good in it. Um, I, I've so, seen yeah. I've seen all about it, and I, I have not played the games because it's this open world. Uh, yeah, what's that called? Sandbox. Yeah, no, but the type of game where you're like you're making decisions. No. Um, well, I, 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 how 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 dare it make you make your decisions? People, people are very upset right now because it's like such a basic question. It's a style style of game. It's not like a first person shooter. It's a an RPG. RPG. Oh man, that's awful. You didn't know that, yeah? I did not. Could not remember that. Yeah, I think so there's a bit first person shootery. Yeah, you're making decisions, uh, but you're yeah. also making decisions. But I, those games are too large for me. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just can't do it. Well, it's it's a really interesting world. It's kind of it's kind of post apocalyptic, but it's, but and it's almost steampunky, but more kind of nineteen nineteen thirties steampunk. So it's not steampunk, but it's or fifties. You know that kind of aesthetic. Yeah. The, it's just really interesting, really interesting. Um, but, it's, but it's got more advanced technology than the 50s. Yeah. All right. Well, Daniel, thanks for yeah. bailing me out for an episode. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Jerry will contact me sometime in the near future and I hope I was back a, up with him. I hope I was an adequate replacement for your listener. Oh, you are. Yeah. More than adequate. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm still bedazzled by your your resplendent facial hair. I I I can li- I'm going to listen to that all day. I'm going to put it on yeah, repeat. Yeah. Oh, well, I've done it again. And you, oh, why do I not think to say these things? That flipping, you know, professional level comedian thing haunts my every waking what? moment. <laughs> I only this- played it for Tom once. I have I have various regrets in my life, um, but the biggest regret I've ever had was uttering those fateful words <laughs> to Richard. But Simpson. they were true to your heart, and that's what counts. At Whether the or not time, you feel that at, way. At the time, I was young. I was impressionable. I didn't know what I was young. saying. I was young and naive. I was young and naive. He <laughs> he was he goaded me into it. <laughs> It was entrapment. Entrapment. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, Thank you, Daniel, for coming on and uh, providing entertainment for the masses. Uh, They always thoroughly enjoy when you come on. And I do as well. It's great to see you again. (laughs) Well, that's fine. Nice to see you. I will go downstairs and have my dinner now at 9 o'clock. There you go. Yeah. In In a timely fashion, we end the show. All right, uh, that's going to do it. Until next time, I'm Gabby, and uh, I'm Dan. Bye-bye. Do you want me to press record? There's no one does what board game snobs do better. They are almost professional-level comedians. Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.